Hi there, we're talking to Jim McLeod in the last video of the series about layer seven networking with a five distributed cloud. My favorite, the reason why is because as we're working on this sample reference application, this was the one that we deployed very easily, very quickly. Um, and it's also something when you build microservices based applications, it's really easy to connect. So Jim, let's talk about this scenario and what we did with refer a friend module. In this case, it was running on VMware and mm -hmm. how we connected it back into cool. a five distributed cloud. So VMware, you've got your own private cloud for that. Correct. Which, which means effectively, if you're building a layer seven load balancer there, now we've got end-to-end -end visibility of the APIs that you're exposing. We've got end-to-end -end observability if you're doing SSL offload within the mesh. And when I say end-to-end, -end, what I'm talking about here is the front-end app, the Arcadia frame itself, the referrer friends. We've also got full visibility into that. And it's all going to the same place. It's all going to the single source of truth, which makes it more maintainable. And which also means that effectively you've got point and click hybrid cloud without having to go through and set up any sort of uh, DCI. And that is that was our experience because we had a VMware uh, cluster running a refer a friend module. And for the reasons of, for example, um, it could be data sovereignty or privacy or any other restriction that a company may have, they may want to keep certain services on-prem within the data center. In this case, we wanted to only expose the refer friend module into the core application so that end users could start pushing out data into this module. Um, and we thought what would be the easiest way to get started? And again, from distributed cloud services, exposing a HTTP load balancer was very easy to do and provided us with a way to connect the different services and have them talk to each other. I love that agile mindset of what's the easiest thing that we can do that'll actually work. Exactly. And I'm glad that we were there to, to help you do that in an ad hoc fashion and make it work in a maintainable fashion. Exactly. Let's talk through um, how we did it in this demo. Okay, as before in the demo, we're gonna compare the uh, coming soon scenario in this case you'll see this module that's running on a on vmware and the first thing we'll do a curl from aws to vmware environment nothing's coming through we'll configure the dns setting to point to volt mesh and then we're going to go into our vmware environments and here let's take a look at the ip address of the resource this this refer a friend ip address dot 240. Um, all we have to do then is start configuring uh, again the uh, HTTP load balancer in this case. And as before, we have the site configured ahead of time. So VMware site is configured. If you want to see how it's done, uh, Pranav has a great session uh, on, uh, it's called application mesh, app mesh, where he goes into much detail as to how it's done. But here we're just configuring the refer a friend um, uh, load balancer and the origin pool that points back to this IP address that we identified earlier. This is the VMware environment dot 240. And this would allow us now to uh, advertise this internal resource into our AWS environment. And what we're doing here is creating a HTTP connection between our VMware environment and AWS. Uh, so again, through a couple of clicks, uh, now we're going to just select uh, advanced fields, uh, advertise into our uh, desired environment. And, you know, again, this is the ease of, of uh, configuring such as, you know, this internal AWS environment inside network, we advertise this resource into it. Couple clicks, all done pretty much immediately. And within you know, a minute, uh, we are now able to go back into the application and doing the same exact curl and uh, take a look at now the uh, refer of friends based on this DNS entry, and it comes back with 200, okay. Um, if we click refresh in the application, now you see the invite a friend capabilities turned on. So just like that, um, the, we'll see the load balancer is configured and this resource, which was on-prem resource is now talking to our application securely. And that's, that's a key thing because we're not just pulling together, we're not using an iframe, we're not dynamically pulling content from a different site. This isn't being stitched together at the client side. This is being delivered as a single application where that application behind the scenes has secure connection so that you're, 
you're not splitting up your data in multiple different paths. You, you maintain that end-to-end, one-to-one relationship with the customer from a data yep. point of view, from a, from a networking point of view. Correct. And also in the level of control to be able to go through the single console within distributed cloud services and being able to tune and optimize it, um, add additional controls, um, add service policies, uh, which obviously um, brings us into the conversation about secure, uh, security and WAP, mm-hmm. web application and API protection, which are, of course, additional topics they can explore in the video series related to distributed cloud security. Jim, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me and talking about these scenarios uh, related to distributed cloud. And we hope to see more exciting things with MCN and distributed cloud in the future. Absolutely, Nick. Always a pleasure to see what you guys have built with the tools that we make. Thank you so much. Okay, bye.